Good morning, class. Good morning, Keith. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit gets fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. Hallelujah. Get your Bible, get something to make a note with, come into the class today. We're learning some good things about faith and healing the will of God, His ways, how He works, how to receive. You don't want to miss this. Father, all of us agree together today asking You for the utterance, the anointing, the direction, the answers. Open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, our minds. Allow us to see the truth that makes free. And we'll give You the praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you go again, please, to Acts, the ninth chapter. We've been studying all this week the healing of Aeneas. And we'll read it again, starting in verse 32 of Acts 9. I'm reading in the CEV, the complete English version. It said, uh, while Peter was driving, excuse me, traveling, not driving. Well, he could have been driving donkey or something, you know. <laughs> He's traveling from place to place. He visited the Lord's followers who lived in the town of Lydda. And there he met a man named Aeneas, who for eight years had been sick in bed and could not move. Peter said to Aeneas, Jesus Christ has healed you. That's the way the CEV says it. The others say, Jesus Christ heals you, or Jesus Christ makes you whole. It's all based on what has been done, Amen. right? Yes. But there are present tense manifestations based on past tense accomplishment. Yes. He said, Jesus Christ healed you, or has healed you. Get up and make up your bed. Get up and make your bed. Well, how many know that Jesus saving us from hell and from being lost has already been done yes. back at the cross? Yes. And so people who are alive but not born again today, they're not waiting on God to decide to do it. They're not waiting on Jesus to accomplish it. It's up to them to receive but what has been accomplished and what has been given must be received to be experienced. And it is really sad that the, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and Jesus has come and Jesus has done it. He has saved the people who are lost, but they won't experience that salvation or that peace or that joy unless and until they receive it. Amen. Hmm? That's right. And so Jesus had already bought and paid for Aeneas healing, yes. hadn't he? Yes. And what he's saying, uh, the Spirit of God prompted Peter to speak this over Aeneas because uh, the situation is right. <laughs> Aeneas can lay hold on this right now. He can receive this. And this is where some help can come in good. That was he helped through Peter? Oh my. Aeneas, Jesus Christ healed you. Arise, get up, and make your bed. Say it out loud. Get up, get up. and make your bed. Make your bed. <laughs> get up and make your bed. Uh, years ago, it's been decades now, but I had the privilege of uh, working at Brother Kenneth Hagin's ministry in, in his uh, 
healing school. In 1982, they built a, a building there and had healing classes there in the morning and the afternoon in another place. And I was privileged to be one of the first ones to start out in that building. And um, so in the morning, the classes were small, just people who had needs themselves coming for themselves. It wasn't open to just anybody that wanted to come and learn about the subject. It was just for those receiving. The afternoon was open to everybody. And uh, I was there for years ministering in that, in that part of the ministry. And uh, there was a woman that they began to bring that was not too far from there who had severe rheumatoid arthritis. And she was drawn, her hands were drawn, her feet were drawn, her legs. It had progressed to the point where she was bedfast. I mean, they could sit her in a chair, kind of, but she couldn't walk across the room. She couldn't do anything, couldn't feed herself, nothing. Her, her fingers and hands and arms and legs and feet and were just drawn and, and gnarled. And, and so they began to bring her to a healing school. And they begin, they'd tote her in, sit her in a chair, towed her out to the car. And she was with me and with us for weeks. And we began to talk about uh, possessing the land, taking the land. You know, God uh, delivered his first covenant people out of Egyptian bondage. And he told them, I found a land for you, Canaan land. It flows with milk and honey. And at one point he said, I have, I have given it to you. Go up and possess it. Now, did you hear that language? I have given it to you. But that don't mean you're enjoying it. Right? right? You still got to go possess it. And that first generation did not possess it and did not enjoy it because they said, we can't. There's giants parked on it that think it's theirs. And they've got walled cities and they've got iron chariots and, and there's no way. There's no way we can't. And so they didn't. But the next generation was tired of circling around out there in the desert. <laughs> and under Joshua's leadership, they went in and took it and possessed it and overcame giants and walled cities. And they overcame all of it and possessed what God had already given to their parents, proving it could be done. Right? Proving their parents were wrong. Their parents said, it, it can't be done. Well, they did it. By God's ability and help, they did it. And so we begin talking about that, how that faith lays hold, faith possesses, faith takes what God has given. And we talked about taking back the land or taking the land because uh, the enemy was living on their possession and they didn't take it all at once. They took a town, they took a city, they took an area, they took a place. And finally they took more and more and more of it. And we talked about possessing your possession progressively, you. taking steps. Where your faith is at. Well, she got a hold of that. I mean, she, she was listening, she was focused. And uh, one day after class, the class was real small. It's about the size of this studio, not too much bigger. And so it, we we're all real close there, you know. And so uh, she, she waved her gnarled hand at me after class and said, you know, come. And so I came and she said, I got it. I got it. I, I said, what? I said, what? She said, I am going to make my bed. That's the language of the scripture right here, right? Yes. right. Isn't that what Jesus told them? And Matthew and John, and rise, make your bed, get your bed, take your bed. She said that dropped in her un under the teaching of the word. Her faith was getting fed. Mm -hmm. huh? Her spirit was getting stronger. And she got that, I'm going to make my bed. Mm -hmm. She hadn't made a bed in years. And so I understood what she's saying. She's going to make up her bed. 
And so uh, her friend told me, somebody that was help to, helping take care of her, that the next day with her gnarled hands, she's pulling up the sheet, she's moving the pillow, she's doing it, and uh, it didn't look real well, real good, but she made her bed. Right. Oh, come on, are y'all listening class or not? It's something she hadn't done. She made her bed. It took her a long time. And it was a little bit piece at a time and it wasn't straight and it wasn't smooth, but she made her bed. And friend, that is something to shout about. Amen. That is something to celebrate. Yes. The scripture said in James, faith without an action is dead. Yeah. You can't just lay and do nothing and say, I believe, I believe, I believe. There's, there's got to be an action to start taking this thing back. And if you've lost like her, you, she lost, completely lost her uh, mobility, completely lost her independence, had lost all of it. She's dependent on somebody else for everything. You got to start taking it back somewhere. And it's going to be according to your faith. Well, uh, she, uh, she made her bed. Next day, she made it again. Next day, she made it again. In a couple of weeks, it looked fair. It looked not too bad, like somebody had made the bed. And this went on week after week after week, and she began to say she's getting out of bed on her own. Amen. This is her faith. I'm getting, out, I'm getting out of bed on my own. And so she'd, she'd push her, her leg out, she'd push her foot out, and she stumbled and needed help, but eventually she got out of bed. And in a few weeks, she's going to get from the bed to the chair. And within a few days, she did it. And within a few weeks, she's doing it pretty good. And within a few more weeks, I'm going to the bathroom. By myself. Oh, come on, are y'all listening or not? And within a few months, it went from making to the bed, to getting to the chair, to getting to the bathroom, to walking to the living room, to going to the kitchen, to making a sandwich, to walking out in the yard, to going around the house, to going, I'm telling to going around the block. And she was bedfast. It happened, not in just a day or two, but in a period of months. But she came all the way out. She's walking around her house by herself, around a block. That is faith. That is victory. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it started instead of her just being tied to the bed. Did you hear the first step? I'm going to make this bed. So then the bed's no longer making her. She's not just tied to the bed. The bed, instead of her being tied to the bed, she is taking control of the bed. Rise. Take up your bed. Come on, can you see this class? Rise. He said, Aeneas, Aeneas, you got to be listening. God will call your name. He'll tell you, right? That's what happened with her. He called her name and said, make your bed, girl. Hmm? And here's what she didn't do. She didn't go, I can't. If she'd have done that, she'd have been stuck. Could Aeneas had looked up pitifully and said, I can't. I'm, don't you understand, Peter? I've been tied to this bed for eight years. Don't you think I'd have got out by now? If I could, he could have gotten indignant. He could have gotten defensive. Couldn't he? Yes. And stayed there. Mm -hmm. Stayed there. Mm -hmm. No. If you'll start believing God, if you'll start feeding your spirit, if you'll start getting stronger, it'll come a time the Spirit of God will go, Betty? Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? Jim? Mm -hmm. right? right? Keith? Yes. Huh? And he'll call on you to do something. With her, it was make your bed. Make your bed. 
I could see the excitement in her eyes. It thrilled me. Even though she was sitting in that chair, just as drawn as she had ever been, I could hear something in her voice when she said, I'm going to make my bed. <laughs> I mean, I started to shout right then like the whole thing was done because I know how this works. One thing leads to another, leads to another. She said, I'm going to make my bed. You know what I said to her? Yes, you are. Yes, yes you are. Yes. yes, you are. Yes, you can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Can you see that she began to break out of that identity of I am crippled by rheumatoid arthritis? I'm this. I'm bed fast. I'm homebound. I'm this. No, she said. I'm going to make my bed. <laughs> I mean, the whole place shouted. You could hear the faith in it. I'm going to make my bed. I said, yes, you are. The rest of them said, yes, she is. Yes, yes. They all started saying, praise God. And within a few months time, well, you know, time's passing anyway, right? Within a few months time, she went from there to making the bed pretty good, to getting to the getting out of bed by herself, getting to the chair, getting to the bathroom, getting to the kitchen. I think she said, making a sandwich, <laughs> right? She hadn't been able to do that. Hadn't been able to do that. Can you see piece by piece, she is laying hold of her possessions. Yes. She is taking back the land that the enemy stole from her. Somebody say, take it back. Take, take it, it back. Back. Take it back. Take it back. Take it all back. Amen. Take it all. Keep taking it till you get it all back. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, man, you could shout about that, couldn't you? <laughs> Glory, to God. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Take it back. Take it all back. And what we see is that the Lord turned her captivity. He turned it completely around. You know, uh, the scripture said in uh, Ephesians 4, you don't have to turn there, but it said, when the Lord ascended on high, he led captivity captive. And the scripture said in Isaiah 14, talking about God's people by his help, Isaiah 14, 2, they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they will rule over their oppressors. Now, the enemy, if he thinks he's got you captive, you tell him he's got another experience coming. Yeah, right. Is that right? Because the Lord has defeated him, hasn't he? He has spoiled principalities and powers and made a show over them, triumphing over them in it, the Bible said. And the scripture said the devil's under our feet. Now he'll do his best to get you to believe that you're under his feet. Yeah. And, and, and if we'll believe the Lord, he will turn this thing completely around. I have seen it. The Lord's done it in my life. I mean, when we started out in this, we were ignorant and broke <laughs> and no influence and no ability. And you start where you are and you let the Lord begin to add something to you and add more to you. Yes. And even though you were the one who needed the help, now for many years, the Lord's using us to help other people. Amen. And not too long ago, I was the one needing the help. Yeah. Can you see it, child of God? Yes. And even though you may be the one who needs everything done for you physically, is it possible that God could turn it around to where he can use you to help somebody else. Right. Instead of you being the one totally dependent, that's what it means when he turns your captivity. He turns it around. You know, the, the, they said about the apostles and disciples when they came into these cities preaching and demonstrating the things of the Spirit and these miracles and healings were happening. They said, these that have turned the world upside down have come here too. Like most things, most things, they got it wrong. It was the devil that messed it up. Yeah. We're turning it back right. right. <laughs> they think it's upside down. But this is the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be healed. You're supposed to be blessed. Yes. You're supposed to be free. Yes. You're supposed to be saved. Yes. Oh, somebody say, turn it around. Turn it, 
Turn it around. Turn it around. Hallelujah. 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 Psalm 30, uh, he said in verse 1, I will extol the Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, Psalm 30, verse 2, I have cried to you and you have healed me. Lord, you have brought up my soul from the grave and you have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. And in verse 11, you have turned for me my mourning into dancing. Is that turning it around or not? I, you've put off my sackcloth and you've girded me with gladness. Hallelujah. 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 Said out loud, you've turned for me, turned my, for me. Mourning my mourning into dancing. Into dancing. My darkness, my darkness into, light. into light. My sickness, my sickness into, health. into health. My bondage, my bondage into, freedom. into freedom. You have turned it around, turned it around. For, me. for me. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. We sing the song, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. That is the reality of salvation in Christ. That is what the good news proclaims. Lost man, you don't have to be lost anymore. Sick person, you don't have to be sick anymore. Right. Broke person, you don't have to be broke anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I believe it, I believe it. and I receive, it. I receive it. In Psalm 126, uh, just a short psalm there, but every one of these verses is talking about this. Psalm 126 verse 1. He said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. We were like them that dream. It was so good, we had to pinch ourselves and say, am I awake? <laughs> Our mouth was filled with laughter. Our tongue with singing. And then they started talking among the heathen. Amen. The heathen said, the Lord has done great things for them. And we said, you got that right. The Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. God has turned our captivity. Come on, say it out loud. The Lord has, the Lord has. turned my captivity. Now notice in Acts 9 what happened as a result of this. Having turned the captivity of Aeneas, having healed him, having raised him up, he came in on the bed, and the bed went out on him. Verse 34, he rose, arose immediately. Like we said, the immediate response of faith in obedience. You'll get an instantaneous manifestation of the Spirit of God. Instantaneous results is what we see here. And verse 35, all that dwelt in Lydda and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord and the church house wasn't big enough. Come on, can you see that? They already got 3,000 got saved here. 2,000 got on the day of Pentecost. Two, another 2,000 got saved as a result of the lame man getting healed at the gate called Beautiful. Now, Aeneas gets healed. Everybody hears about it, finds out how real God is, how good God is, and it says all of them. This is the whole town of Lydda and all the outskirts of Saron. How many people is this? It said they all. Turn to the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. You talk about evangelism. You talk about building the church. All? All of them? Somebody says, uh, uh, have you been down to Lydda lately? <laughs> no. I said, they're all Christian down there now. <laughs> they closed up the other shops. I mean, Apollo's temple and Zeus and all that much. Mm, shut them down. <laughs> they're all Christian. All Christian. Yeah, not only them. All the outskirts. Everybody that lives in that whole Saron Plain, that whole area. All Christians now. Mm. Glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. glory to God. There has never been anything as effective in reaching the lost as healings and deliverances and miracles, and never will be. And so people that say, well, you know, they needed back th that back there then to get the church kicked off and get it started. 
And what do we need now? Huh? What's going on? You think we don't need it now? Look around. No, God hasn't changed. This is still what's supposed to be happening. Somebody say, I accept this. I, I receive this. I believe this. And healings for you, child of God. Don't doubt it. Even if you're not experiencing it all, don't discount it. Don't refuse it. Don't identify with the problem and resign yourself that you have to stay stuck. Eight years is a long time, but it changed like that for him. Hallelujah. In a moment, it changed for him, and it'll change for you too if you'll keep believing and following him, and, and he'll call your name, Aeneas, <laughs> Sally, <laughs> huh, Bob. And when he does, you say, I'm here, Lord. What? 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 It may be as simple as make your bed. Huh? Get, get to the chair. Do this. Take a step. Reach out your hand. Do something. And you'll find when you reach the end of your ability to obey, you'll meet something else you hadn't experienced before. You'll meet the power of God and you'll be loosed. And give God the glory when you do. That's it. Our time's up again. But come back with us next week. There's more cases in here to learn about. We'll see you soon back here at Faith School. Sure enjoyed being with you again this week. Uh, I like to, uh, end of the week, uh, thank all our partners and believe with you and release faith with you for your provision. I know many of you are hooked with us. You're helping to produce this and, and send it by your prayers and, and your sowing. Don't identify with poverty and lack. Like we were talking about that with, with sickness. You are not the broke trying to get ahead. I know it may look like that and feel like that, but if you're a believer, like we said, the scripture said, uh, the Lord, even though he was rich, became poor for us so that we through his poverty might be made rich. That's 2 Corinthians 8, 9. That's Bible. You've been made rich. So you want to identify with that. You want to think rich. You want to talk rich. You want to plan rich. You want to put him first, but you are not the poor. I speak over you. You are the blessed of the Lord. And that blessing is working in your life powerfully, and you are overcoming. You're coming out of lack. You're coming out of deficiency into plenty in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We'll come back with us next week, and let's keep feeding our faith. We're coming up from faith to faith, grace to grace, glory to glory. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390. 